Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new updates in regards to FRBs, also known as fast radio bursts. And more specifically, we're talking about this older discovery that actually made the news a few years ago of the FRB known as 121102. This was the first ever repeating FRB. This was a radio burst that was actually known to repeat several times, but we didn't really see any patterns up until today. The scientists have just discovered its repeated patterns and we now know what sort of a cyclical pattern it has, which of course might help us explain the origins of these signals. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Today, FRBs have become sort of one of the bigger mysteries out there in the universe since their original discovery in 2007. The original signals were received on Earth back in 2001 and it took us a few years to realize that these signals were coming from something new, something unusual and something really mysterious. Also, something extremely powerful. Even though technically these signals can be compared in power to using your smartphone on the moon and then someone from Earth trying to detect your signal, because we're talking about millions and in some cases billions of light years away from our planet Earth, something extremely powerful must have created them for them to be detected on our planet. They also generally differ just enough to be natural signals, so today we know that it's definitely not aliens. But at the same time we still have no idea what's causing them because of all of these unusual differences we're observing. Some of them are repeated, some of them only seem to happen once, and in some cases we found one signal, which I've talked about last year, that actually happens repeatedly every 16 days or so. This was the signal that was discovered and it actually was really big news back then. In that particular case, for about 4 days the signal would burst every hour or every 2 hours and then disappear for about 12 days. So it's as if something was hiding these signals for 12 days and then would start reappearing again with occasional bursts every few hours. And one of the biggest discoveries came to us only a few months ago from when I'm making this video from the incredible observatory in Canada that you see right here known as Chime. Although maybe it's Chime, I'm not sure. And this was a discovery of a signal coming directly from our own galaxy from approximately 30,000 light years. And it just so happens that the region where it came from is also known for a very powerful and a very active magnetar which has been one of the main explanations for what's causing FRBs. We always believed them to be some sort of really powerful neutron stars or possibly magnetars. And this definitely confirms that at least some of the FRBs do actually come from magnetars and from natural sources and not from some unusual phenomenon we can't explain. But now we have this new analysis and new confirmation which might help us explain things even further. So this is in regards to the very famous FRB 121102, which was the first ever repeating FRB. And the scientists discovered how it repeats. They basically found a pattern of repetition, which now will be confirmed in June, because we think it's going to restart its activity in the next few weeks or so. According to the observations, it seems to have a 157 day cycle. It produces a lot of bursts for approximately 90 days and then stays completely quiet for about 67 days. And this, as you can see in this particular illustration, seems to indicate that something is blocking the signals. Something like an object that it orbits around, like for example maybe a very massive black hole or even a really massive star. For example, if it does orbit a black hole, we should be able to detect other signs such as for example relativistic effects when the light passes very close to the black hole, which will allow us to um, sort of prove this even further. Because a typical black hole will definitely produce a lot of other interesting effects that should be observable. However, if it's something else, like a, for example a massive star or some other object that this particular magnetar or neutron star orbits around, we should be able to see other signs eventually. With time we should definitely be able to see the differences in signals as we receive more and more of them to help us determine what exactly it's orbiting around. And discovering this pattern is a pretty big achievement because first of all it implies that maybe all of the FRBs are repeated, maybe all of them have these signals, we just don't have enough power to detect some of the weaker ones, because the actual difference in power between FRBs is usually really big, some of them are extremely strong and some of them are extremely weak. 
Also because as of today we only have about 32 different bursts from this FRB, as we acquire more and more of them, we'll definitely be able to create a much bigger and much better picture of what exactly is happening in this star system. Assuming of course it's a star system. And one of the more recent papers from June of 2020 established what FRBs are probably not, and the scientists in that paper concluded that, for the most part, FRBs can only come from either really compact objects like magnetars. Some of these FRBs can also come from the actual um, supernova itself when the magnetar is formed, and some of them might also come from neutron star collisions, which we know we can easily detect with the LIGO observatory. So if one day we detect the gravitational waves and at the same time actually see the uh, FRBs coming from that direction as well, it will be a telltale sign that neutron star collisions can also produce these effects. But right now we're more interested in trying to discover what exactly these repeated FRBs are, what's causing their repetitions, and more importantly, are they caused by the objects we're familiar with and know quite well, theoretically, or are they caused by some unusual peculiar effects we've never observed before, and possibly some other unusual things that we need to investigate in order for us to understand the universe better. Even though when the FRBs were initially discovered, this is kind of what the scientists thought, we weren't really sure what's happening here, the more observations we get, the more likely it seems that there is no new physics involved here. This is all just the extreme effects from some of the more extreme objects in the universe, which are of course magnetars, the most powerful magnets out there. And in case of this particular detection, we now think that it has to be a very specific binary system. For example, it cannot be a type of a donor system where a larger star and a neutron star exist together, where the star itself is essentially so close to the neutron star that it starts losing all of its mass due to the Roche effects, Roche limit effects that is. We currently don't think that this is such a system simply because they often have really short periods and the stars are really really close together. However, it can be a type of an object known as high mass x-ray binary, which usually is characterized by an extremely extremely massive O-type or B-type star, which is also extremely bright. We have one example of such star right here known as Cygnus X1 with the star itself dominating the optical light, whereas the compact object in the middle here dominates the X-ray emissions as it absorbs a little bit of mass from the star. So in other words, these types of systems could actually produce the effects we observed from the FRBs that are repeated. And this is what the scientists currently think might happen around these systems. A really large O-type star orbited by a magnetar in a very specific fashion, where it captures some of its mass, releases a tremendous amount of energy, saw it as radio bursts, and eventually becomes invisible to us when it passes behind the really large star and stays in this region for some time until, once again, become invisible to us when it moves to the other location. So for now, this is probably one of the better explanations with what we're seeing with these repeated FRBs, but it will probably be a few more years before we can definitively say what's happening here and what is causing these FRBs from repeating so frequently. But in the next few months, as we're observing this particular FRB in a little bit more detail, because the current predictions suggest that it's going to restart its activity in the summer of 2020, it might end up answering all of these questions a lot sooner than we think. So, on that note, once we discover more with what's happening here, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, peace out, and as always, bye-bye.